Tool walls are beautiful. For the most part. I think mine looks pretty good except for one little thing. Let's fix that and then I'll show you around my custom setup. I'm going to fill that void with a hand plane till. I don't use hand planes very often, but they need a home regardless. We'll start by breaking down some half inch plywood to be the back and the sides. To get the appropriate length of the bottom, I'll take the two side pieces and put them together on one edge. That way I can just mark the line without having to calculate anything. This may not be necessary, but I wanted something soft on the back. And a better woodworker would go and buy some felt or something nice like that. I'm going to use an old discarded hand towel from a bathroom. How's that for trailer park bougie? While I wait for that spray adhesive to dry, I'll cut the small dividers out of quarter inch plywood and the angled pieces that attach to the tool wall itself out of three quarter inch. It'd be easier to go ahead and put those pocket holes in now, and then I'll tape them together and rip them on the bandsaw so they'll each have a mirror image of the same angle. I trimmed the edges of the rag with an X-Acto knife and found an excuse to use the blowtorch to clean up those frayed edges. What type of glue do you use to glue plywood together when there's a rag in between? Maybe PVA would have worked, but I went with Gorilla Glue and tacked in some nails from the back. The angled pieces were more straightforward, wood glue and pocket hole screws. Then was the part that was definitely not straightforward. I've got quarter inch plywood with a rag in between, so I went with Gorilla Glue again, but they're way too thin to tack in with nails. So I decided to apply some CA glue into the joints and quickly hit it with activator. These won't be taking any weight, they're just separating the individual hand planes. So I think this will be okay. Time will tell. All that's left to do is to screw it into the backer panel of the tool wall. As promised, here's a run through of my tool wall. On this bottom shelf I have screwdrivers uh, with just little holes drilled to fit them in. Uh, you've got Phillips head on the right, flat head up the middle, two star drive or Torx, a ratcheting screwdriver and adjustable. And just above that is my carving tools. Then I have T-handled Allen wrenches, both standard and metric increasing in size toward the middle. And then on that shelf is the Allen keys that come as a set. Just above that I have small scissors, protractor, and a compass just hung on nails. The last thing on the shelf is a piece of Kaizen foam where my marking knife and X-Acto knife live. And then hanging from that is two vice grips and four utility knives. The black striped one is for when you're cutting something dirty like sod or shingles and you don't want to mess up your nice blade. At the end of the bottom row is my hammer tray. It's just holes drilled in a piece of plywood where all of the types of hammers that I use live. Also center punch and two masonry chisels. This little piece of plywood here is where the honing guide for sharpening just pinches onto. And then above that we move on to chisels. I keep two sets of chisels, good ones with the wood handles and not so good ones with the orange handles. The orange ones are good for scraping off glue or surfaces that you don't want to subject your nice chisels to. Those just hang on a kitchen knife magnet. Next up is a shelf for my files. The multi-purpose rasp sits in the front and then files all have holes cut that match their size. And then on this drawer pull is the bag for my laser level. Hanging on the front of the plier shelf is the crescent wrench. As we move from left to right, we have long needle nose pliers, shears, cable cutters, bolt cutters, tin snips, scissors, electrical pliers, big channel locks, little channel locks, big needle nose, 
regular pliers, big dykes, little dykes, and little needle nose. Each plier has a custom hole cut to fit that particular tool. To the right of the plier shelf I have my string level and the mechanism that goes on the 12 inch combination square. I tend to use the 6 inch square more and I like having a standalone 12 inch metal ruler like you see here. Those are just attached with magnets on either side. I also keep a 6 inch metal rule on a magnet down here below the screwdrivers because it's so flat to the wall that they don't infect the screwdrivers coming out. This mechanism is a old aluminum ruler sandwiched between two pieces of plywood that your tape measurer hooks can hook to. And down here on the right is a little magnet with a pocket knife that I found when I was like 10 years old. On a nail is a Duresta ice pick. And then there's this ledge with these two tabs that captures the woodpecker's T-square. Two nails that hold the digital angle finder. And as we come up, we've got these two blocks of wood with holes drilled in it for writing implements. Two more nails to hold a little level. And there's a slot cut in this block that holds my favorite square. Here's that six inch combination square I was talking about just on a ledge. We have the big framing square, the combination square. In my previous miter saw station I had drawers with Kaizen foam for all my tools so I just salvaged those for the moisture meter and the digital calipers. This little nub of a broom handle holds this flexible ruler that I use once in a blue moon. And then this Incra sliding square thing sits on a ledge at the top and there's magnets holding it in place as well. Below that is this block of wood with a hole drilled through it for my marking gauge. Up here tucked away is a magnet for my feeler gauge. To the left of all that stuff is another piece of Kaizen foam for the metal detector. Another magnet for two serrated knives, which is good for cutting foam. The edge banding trimmer. The Jonathan Katz Moses dovetail guide. This little 90 degree poker, which has come in handy once or twice. And this little shelf for the engineer's rule, which is really nice because it has tenths of inches, which you may need every now and again. Hanging on a tack is a little flashlight. And down here is a cubby for this equidistance accordion thing, which can give you even segments between points. Continuing to the left, we have a shelf for a sharpening stone, four nails for my four putty knives. You know all about that guy. And we have a dowel for ear protection and safety glasses. A set of dental picks, which is on a magnet, and this roller is just friction fit into this little bracket. Another roller, pry bar on nails. We have angled slits cut into this block of wood for the card scrapers and a hole in the back for the burnisher. My stud finder is just on Velcro. Up here on the right we have setup blocks just placed into holes in a block of wood, a veneer scorer, and a spoke shave. And then on the top right is my saw holder. It's much more space efficient to store them like this, like books on a shelf. It's just pieces of wood sticking out with inset magnets. We have a flush trim saw on the end, mini hacksaw, and drywall saw. The coping saw doesn't have enough material for the magnets to bite onto it, so it has a dowel. I have a push saw, what I'm calling a western saw, is just too heavy for these magnets, I've got it temporarily clamped in place. The hacksaw, also too heavy, so it's on a dowel. The Japanese pole saw, which I use most often, holds itself up on magnets. And then we have the hand saw. At the end is a one-handed deal with a reciprocating saw blade on it. Hope you enjoyed, let me know what you think down in the comments. See you next time.